if you allow me to put in context this film, it's not about the film itself that I want to talk to you about. It's about the social struggle of disability in this country. And I promise you, even though this is a conference, this is very short. But I do have to warn you that this is going to be a little harsh for some of you who may not be familiar with this field. Just a few bullet points I want to talk to you about. <clears throat> in 1924, the state of Virginia tried out a legal challenge that they crafted earlier. The case was Buck versus Bell. Carrie Buck was 18 years old, she had finished sixth grade, and she was incarcerated in a center for the feeble-minded, which was a phrase that was used then. The center was petitioned to sterilize Carrie on the grounds that she represented, quote unquote, a genetic threat to society. She appealed. In 1927, the case went to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court upheld the compulsory sterilization of, quote unquote, defectives. This next statement is a direct quote from the decision. Three generations of imbeciles is enough. That's the Supreme Court. In an eight to one decision, the court legitimized the law on sterilization, which was not fully repealed in this country until 1985. By the way, the Chief Justice was William Taft, who later became our 27th President of the United States. During that period of time, over 60,000 people with disabilities were sterilized in the United States. This was known as the eugenics movement. And I may point out that there's probably a number of us in this very room that would have gone through that process. By the 1970s, institutions had incarcerated tens of thousands of people with disabilities for their entire lives solely based on their diagnosis of disability. They broke no laws and they committed no crimes. Even today, that struggle continues. Retardation, autism, and other diagnoses are real categories and they outline real behaviors but they are simply a set of human characteristics that reside in all of us in some form or another. Too much of these characteristics and you get a label. But in no case, I want to repeat, in no case should these labels define our potential or our humanness. The proof of these words are being documented daily. Today you will see for yourself. Now onto the screening of Wretches and Jabbers. Good evening. Um, I would like to know in your travels to the various countries that you made, is there a particular country or even state that you feel has the best services for um, individuals with autism? <laughs> Vermont. <laughs> Not people overcrowded California, but maple syrupy Vermont. Um, I have a question. I'm in, um, I teach a primary, second, third, and fourth grade autism program, and um, I would love your thoughts on how I help my parents of my students accept their children's autism and help them move forward in empowering their children to be what they can be. Two. Well, I think firstly the focus needs to be on what the student is as a person and their uniqueness. Secondly, autism is not a death sentence or condition. We simply see the world differently and move through it in our own way. And thirdly, you can bring me into a show one and two. Look at labels like artists, mighty athletes, all writers can define them, not label of autism. Hi, um, do you have any advice for someone who's trying to teach children with autism how to type? Two more. <laughs> <laughs> 
Pascal. Yes, call power and Pascal. <laughs> yes, call power and Pascal. Pascal, learning to type requires a bigger outreach environment, good teaching and understanding of movement issues corrected with support and now with the whole trainer goes by Harvey and Pascal. Expression. Mold their minds to language moving through their finger as the line flattening right for personal expression. Thank you. 